Hello, my name is Sydney Interebner. I'm here today with the AWWA Thought Leader Series. Today we are going to discuss denitrification in wastewater. Congress passed the Clean Water Act in 1972, and EPA started enacting legislation. In the beginning, we were asked to remove BOD and TSS, and we got pretty good at it. After a while, the next set of criteria came down and we started to remove ammonia and we got really good at that too and in removing ammonia we actually created a new problem because when we remove ammonia from wastewater we convert it from ammonia to nitrate and nitrate has its own issues most notably the safe drinking water limit or nitrate of 10 milligrams per liter out here in the arid west where I am located this can actually be a big enough problem uh, with wastewater treatment plants discharging nitrate that it can affect downstream drinking water supplies. And so now we're looking at the next step of treatment or the next logical part of the process, which is to actually remove nitrate. Okay, so putting nitrate in the river has the safe drinking water problem issue for the standard 10 milligrams per liter for nitrate. Uh, babies and folks with blood disorders and the elderly can, if they have too much nitrate in their system, suffer from a condition called blue baby syndrome or methemoglobinemia. On top of that, we also have just continued environmental impacts. You know, plants and algae don't care if the nitrogen is in the ammonia form or the organic form or nitrate form. To them, it's all fertilizer. So just taking care of the conversion of ammonia to nitrate wasn't solving all of the problems. It was taking care of ammonia toxicity in waterways, but not all of these other issues. And so denitrification is accomplished by a lot of different heterotrophic facultative bacteria.